Hey, what's up, Bronco? You have a good weekend, man? Yeah, I had a good weekend, too. You hang out with your buddy? I see you brought your buddy along with you over here. What's his name? Ah, oh, hey, this is... <laughs> this here is Peba. Alright, yeah, that's, that's Rocco's buddy, Peba. He's a nice guy. Hey, uh, Peba and Rocco are here today to help me out explain a, a new concept we're learning about. Uh, this new concept is the concept of thermal energy and temperature. So actually two concepts, okay? Um, and specifically, these guys are going to, they're going to teach you how you can know the difference between thermal energy and temperature. All right? Okay, guys, let's get started. Um, to begin, you learned in the last unit that thermal energy is a specific type of kinetic energy. Um, it's the energy of the little particles inside something that are moving. Like, for instance, if we took Rocco here, and we, uh, we know that his little, the particles that make him up, they're moving. They're actually moving. And the amount of energy that those particles have, that's his thermal energy. Uh, Peba here, his little particles are moving too because all matter is made up of tiny particles that are always moving. So let's see the difference now between thermal energy and temperature. Okay. Here's the key difference. Thermal energy, it's the total amount of kinetic energy in something. Temperature is the average amount of kinetic energy in something. All right, you're confused. Rocco and Peba, help me out. Okay, let's say we had to, no, let's start with temperature. Let's say we had to find the temperature of Rocco. Well, you know, you've gone to the nurse before and the nurse, when, they, when she takes your temperature, she, she takes a thermometer. Don't leave, that was the recorded bell. She puts the thermometer in your mouth, and the thermometer measures your temperature. But what is that really showing? Well, if we could take all the particles inside Rocco and get each one of them to tell us how much kinetic energy they had, then we took all those numbers, we added them all together, and we divided them by the number of particles in Rocco. That's how we find an average, right? So we would find his average kinetic energy. That's his temperature. Now, if we wanted to find how much thermal energy Rocco had, we got to do something different. So we talk to all those little particles inside Rocco and we say, hey, how much kinetic energy do you have, little guys? And they all tell us, now all we have to do this time is add them up. Because it's the total of all the kinetic energy of all those little particles. You put them together and you just add them. Okay, so you see one is the average, the other is the total. Let me, let me show you in another way that maybe will make it even a little more obvious. Um, imagine that I have two samples of liquid here. And since, you know, we can't possibly count all the particles in a liquid, I blew them up, okay? I, I made imaginary particles. Let's say these are all of the particles in this sample of water, three of them. Okay, of course, that's never going to happen. But. Then in this slightly larger sample of water, there's five particles making up this bigger sample of water. Now, if we were to find their temperature, all we would have to do is add up the thermal energy of each of the particles. Here we have 23, 24, and 25, and divide them by the total. So in this case, the temperature would be 23 plus 24 plus 25. And then we divide that number by 3 to get the average. Average temperature, 24. 
that's what the thermometer tells us when we put it in there, okay? It gives us the average temperature. That's what a thermometer does. That's what that instrument does. Now, if we wanted to know the kinetic or the thermal energy, the total amount, well, it's almost the same. We just add them up, but then we don't divide them by the number of particles. We just keep that total. So here we have a small sample with a temperature of 24 and a thermal energy of 72. Let's do the same for our big sample. Looks like we've got two 17s, an 18, and two 19s. Well, if that was the kinetic energy of these particles, the math would look something like this. To find the temperature, we add them all up. We come up with 90. But remember, this is average, so we have to divide it by the total number of particles. The end result, average temperature, 18. If we wanted to know the thermal energy, we add them up. But that's all we do, because we want to know the total kinetic energy when we're talking about thermal energy. So, here's an interesting fact. Look at this. If we take the temperature of these two samples, the little one has the higher temperature, but it has the lower thermal energy. Ooh, now that's interesting. How can that be possible? How can something have a lower temperature but a higher amount of kinetic energy? That's the riddle for today, and if you paid close attention, I'll bet you can figure it out. Thanks, Rocco. Thanks, Peba. We'll see you all next time.